much for clicking on this video. Hope you're having an awesome day. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to hang out with me. Today's video, I think I'm like the last person to unbox their boxy charms for April 2020, but better late than never. Today I have two premiums to unbox and they feel heavy. It was raining, so these boxes look a little damaged, which I'm kind of sad because I would like to keep these boxes to use for future giveaways because it's a decent sized box. It can fit a lot of goodies in here. I'll link my BoxyCharm playlist to watch previous unboxings. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a like. Let's get unboxing. Also, this BoxyCharm premium video will be a try-on style. I really enjoy doing the try-on styles, giving you guys my first impressions on the products received. And each box I chose a different choice item so I hope that helps give us a different variation between the two boxes and if I get any duplicate items they will be in a future giveaway. So starting off with the first box. <laughs> ah, something fell. I think it was the card. This is a separate card. I got two cards. One about makeup eraser. Ooh, I love makeup eraser. This is what the inside looks like. Natasha Denona. We can get down. Foam. <gasps> Lunar Beauty? Do my eyes deceive me? I really thought that all the PR boxes were gonna have this palette in it because it's PR and they always seem to have better variations and I really thought everyone else was going to get the pure Barbie palette. Nothing against pure but BoxyCharm we see a lot of pure palettes and quite frankly I'm tired of pure palettes. All the pure palettes that I own I received in BoxyCharm they've been very hit or miss and the Smashbox palette I already own and I believe I've done a video on that so I will link that for reference so I'm excited for this. I've only tried one other Lunar Beauty product before so I'm hoping that this works out. Yep. Oh, my favorite brand, Wander Beauty. It's been a hot minute since they've been in BoxyCharm. Okay, but real talk, Wander Beauty has been a pretty big hit for me. I went through their eyebrow pencil. I'm loving the setting sprays. They're doing better in my book. I got Variation 40 for this premium. The first product, we've already addressed the Lunar Beauty Life's a Drag palette. I did pick up the Moon Spell palette when it was released around Halloween. It was hit or miss for me. I was obsessed with the color story. Some of the shades worked really well. Some of them didn't work out that well. One of the shades smelled real funky. It's just eh. It wasn't like the best experience from trying a new brand, but it wasn't the worst. I mean, I will still use that palette. The formula just didn't blow me away. Oh, oh there goes the brush. <laughs> That's two for dropped items. When I saw this palette for Solange, I was like, okay, she cute. We got some pops of color. We could also do some neutrals. So we could either just focus on color, focus on neutral, dabble between both of them. So I wonder if palette to palette the formula is consistent. I also recently picked up the Strawberry Dream palette to try to give Lunar Beauty another shot. This was on sale at Sephora, so your girl can't resist the sale. They are a newer brand and to see them in BoxyCharm is very exciting. Comment below what palette did you receive in your BoxyCharm premium. Before I forget, this retails for $45 and BoxyCharm premium, I forgot to talk about BoxyCharm premium. It's $35 a month, so this is $10 more than what you paid for. And I believe each box is over a $200 value. You definitely get your money's worth just getting this product. And you also get your money's worth for seeing Natasha Denona, which I am very excited to see. This is a blush duo that retails for $38. So $3 more than what you pay for. I am definitely building up my Natasha Denona collection from Boxy Premium. Oh, these are very pretty shades. These are kind of up my alley. Definitely this pink. We have like a more peachy blush, which I enjoy peachy, but this is like very, I don't know, almost like my skin tone color. <laughs> so hopefully it'll show up nice on the cheeks as well. I'm gonna do swatches before we try on the products. And my choice item, I picked out the Kapari Coconut Face Cream. And this retails for $38. And it is 2.5 fluid ounces. Kapari Skincare Line is very hit or miss for me. Last year, BoxyCharm did a dedicated skincare box, which I want them to do another one. I was hoping that they would do them often, but it's okay. I got their cleansing oil. The cleansing oil was okay. It wasn't Tatcha, but it wasn't the worst. <laughs> I mean, I'm still working through it slowly. And then their Coconut Rose Toner. Once again, it's okay. And I really think with that, it's in a spray application component and I just don't like the spray radius of it. I definitely feel like I'm just there forever spraying my face. Recently, I've tried spraying it onto a cotton round. I find that being a little bit more beneficial because the cotton round soaks it up and I'm able to apply toner like normal. So I just wanted to try more from Kapari. It's a brand that I don't hate, but I don't like go out of my way buying. 
It's soaking into my hand nice, does feel hydrating. Doesn't really have much of a scent to it, even though it's called coconut face cream, which is nice, because I like the Sol de Janeiro. That coconut scent, very overwhelming, gives me the worst headaches. It's a daily lightweight moisturizer, which it did feel lightweight, packed with fatty acids to help nourish, hydrate, and strengthen the skin's protective barrier for a more youthful appearance. Okay, so it doesn't say if it's for dry skin, normal skin, combination. Hopefully it's versatile for many skin types. But for me being dry skin, I think it feels good. Was lightweight, so what it said didn't lie. More youthful appearance, I'm a little bit more skeptical on that. Ah, good old Wander Beauty. This is the Mile High Club Volume and Lengthen Mascara, and this retails for $26. Let's take a look-see at the wand. Uh, for lengthening and volumizing, this does not seem like the most impressive wand. This wand I would typically pair with another mascara, but just from like previous experiences, wands like this just doesn't do enough for me. I can see lengthening, but not enough volumizing. So this is like a good second mascara to go in with to help separate the lashes, break up any clumps. Maybe I'll try one side by itself, and then the other eye, I'll pair it with my Tarte Big Ego. Next we have by Too Faced, the rich, dazzling, high shine sparkle lip gloss. I have the shade Hidden Talent. This is actually really pretty. I like this packaging. All right, she cute. I'm gonna go on ahead and do a swatchy. Ooh, it looks more metallic. It's very opaque for a gloss, and that's what she looks like. Hopefully it's not sticky. I hate a sticky gloss, especially when it's windy. You know, you're just minding your own business, and then a gust of wind comes, and pff, your hair is in your face, it's on your lips, try to take it out, and it's like that really slimy feeling. Oh, I hate that. I had no idea these glosses even existed. The last product is by Opulent Beauty. This is the Crystal Clear three-piece brush collection, and it retails for $40. I'm always down to get brushes. Have I tried this brand? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't ring any bells. These remind me of fair brushes that we got that were overly priced, but hopefully these are good. And this is what the brushes look like. I already have my foundation on, so I don't think this Kabuki brush will get much use out of it. I'll try that at a later point. This is the powder brush. So hopefully I can maybe use it for bronzer, maybe some blush, and then a bullet brush, so maybe to set the eyes, highlighter. I'm very happy to get the variation with Lunar Beauty and Natasha Denona, so that's a win-win right there. But I'm not mad with anything else either. Everything seems pretty good. Let's open up the second one. And here we go. Oh, and card down. Why am I getting makeup eraser cards when there's no makeup eraser in here? <laughs> okay. Got the card. And this is Variation 58. That's a lot of variations for BoxyCharm this month. Woo! Ta-da! We got bubble wrap in this one. And I think I see two repeat items, so that means giveaway. So I received the brushes again, as well as the mascara. So these are gonna be set aside for you guys. My choice item for this was the Peach and Lily The Good Acids Pore Toner, and this retails for $39. Peach and Lily has been a brand that is growing on me. I've only tried a handful of their products. I really like their AHA resurfacing peel that they have, but it makes my face super sensitive for about three days. I was very shocked. I was like, why does my face keep tingling? And I was like, what did I do differently in my skincare routine? It was that. But after using that product, my face felt brand new. Like it was super soft. I saw a huge difference in my texture, it was like being gone my redness had reduced. It was just my face was super sensitive. So it's a product that I can only use once a week. I've actually been using it every other week just because I don't want to really aggravate my skin. I also picked up a few of their products during 21 Days of Beauty. Figured it was a good time to try them. And then when I saw them as a twist item, I had to have it. And I'm running low on toner. I'm working on panning two right now. They're making really good progress. So this is going to be a great addition. With it being HA, I don't think I'll be able to use this every single day. Yeah, it says start with two times per week. <laughs> Maybe we'll see if my face can build a tolerance with it. It's a pH balancing toner that helps gently slough off dead skin and prep skin for the rest of your routine. AHAs help loosen dead skin cells so they can fall away, which helps maintain clean pores, which I need. My pores have been terrible recently. Cape lilac, eggplant, and turmeric extract soothe and nourish. Discover an easy way to radiance. And what is this? This is Levito Age Away Replenishing Cream. 
and retails for $69. I don't think I've ever heard of libido before. For dry, mature skin. Well, I am dry. I creeping up on 30. So I guess that would be maturing age. I'm still a kid at heart. I'm in denial about my age. Who am I kidding? Always down for products that say for dry skin. I mean, I am getting some wrinkles going on under eyes, forehead, sad truth. We'll put on this hand that didn't have Kapari. She looks a little thicker than Kapari. And there's a little bit of a scent to it. It's like a clean scent. It actually feels really nice. It's just having little difficulties rubbing and soaking in all the way. Made with 11 innovative organic plant actives, this anti-aging solution is clinically proven to diminish the appearance of dryness. Really? <laughs> I am not gonna look like a dehydrated SpongeBob. Wrinkles and rough texture while it deeply nourishes mature skin. You know what? I'm gonna take you up on that, Levito. $69 is definitely more on the pricier side. I automatically think of Tatcha when comparing the prices. Like this would have been really good to receive during winter. I like a more thicker cream like this in the winter time. When it's more spring summer, I like a more lightweight cream like Kapari. Oh, we got the Pharmacy Honey Potion Renewing Antioxidant Hydration Mask. And this retails for $38. For some reason, I thought this was more expensive. I think this is actually a smaller jar. 1.7 ounces, that's still a decent amount of product. I like that this is magnetized. I have actually tried this before. Did not like it. And it was around the time I tried the honey serum that we got in Boxy Lux last year. Didn't like it either. My skincare routine with them didn't agree. So I'm gonna give this another shot and see. But this is an intensely hydrating honey face mask for a glowing complexion infused with powerful antioxidants this warming mask leaves skin soft supple and plump with hydration so when I first used it I didn't know about the warming effect I thought I was having a skin reaction to it so now I know I kind of just wrote off that product instead of using it for like a week or two I ended up returning it to Sephora I really like pharmacy products a lot their cherry line is really growing on me I have the eye cream and the serum never got a cherry bomb it was on for add-ons and I was late to the add-on party the last product is by Juice Beauty. This is the Phyto Pigments Liquid Lip and it retails for $24. This is the shade Chelsea, Chelsea, say that you love me. Oh man, the summer set. Gotta love them. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of Juice Beauty. I ran off their products really quick. I don't know, it kind of just creeps me out putting juice on my face. And then when I actually think about a lot of products that have lemon extract in it, which probably shouldn't be putting on your face anywhere because it's gonna burn. This liquid lipstick looks pretty and I do want to give it a shot. Okay, like that shade is right up my alley. Maybe with this liquid lipstick and the gloss might be a good duo. Overall, I really enjoyed both boxes. I definitely liked my first box a little bit better because it had Natasha Denona and Lunar Beauty in it, but it doesn't take anything away from the second box. I mean, we got some really awesome skincare items like Pharmacy, Levito, and Peach and Lily. I am very pleased with both variations that I got. Let's test out some of these products on the face. I already have my foundation foundation and brows filled in using products from my shop my stash almost a project pan but no it's shop my stash this time i'll link that video for reference so we're going to start off this look using the life's a drag palette i'm very excited for this I think for this look i'm gonna go for a neutral look and then like a bold lower lash swatches jumping ahead of myself cake face sickening hunty beat Everything felt really creamy. There's pigment all the way through. So let's keep going. Campy Pageant Queen Kiki. These colorful mattes felt a little bit more dry compared to these three more neutral shades. And this is the top row swatched. Shady Trade Mug Legendary. Oh, that black shade is so pigmented. Holy crap. She was not messing around. Kai Kai Snatched Fishy. I am obsessed with the shade Fishy. 
And this is the entire palette swatched. Everything swatched really nice. There was some fallout with some of the shades being swatched, like this purple shade's actually all over me right now. I am very impressed with how everything swatched. Everything looks really pigmented, very rich and vibrant. Except for Kiki, I wish it was just a little bit brighter. This yellow looks very nice. It's hard to find a good matte yellow. To kick things off, I'm gonna take Hunty, and I am just going to be putting this shade all over the crease. It's a very beautiful transition shade. Blends out really nice, very effortless. That's like one of the most perfect transition shades I think I've ever slabbed on the crease. And I think with the same brush, I'm gonna dip into Mug. And Mug, we're just gonna deepen it a little bit. Just help define the area between the crease and the lid. I've actually been reaching for neutrals lately. It's like you create a couple of neutral looks and you're like, oh, I forgot how much I actually really like neutrals. And then very lightly, we're gonna dip into Trade. Just deepen, round it up, bring it up to the crease a little bit, just to give the outer V a little bit of dimension. And then we're gonna take Legendary for the lid. Like a half cut crease without cutting the crease. I like that a lot. No additional product. Now we took Trade On and just do some little circular motions to make sure that it's nice and blended in. All right, I'm actually really liking how this is looking so far. I'm gonna take my Kaleido Cosmetics Liquid Eyeliner on my lid and the Tarte Easy on the Eyes Pencil Liner on the waterline. Quickly want to shout out my friend Karen Harris. I am wearing her hoodie and she recently just hit 5k on her YouTube channel. Definitely go check her out. I have been doing so many pop of blues on the lower lash recently. I always give it shit when I see palettes that are neutral with the pop of bloom. So I'm going to change it up and do Pageant Queen instead right here. I don't really even think I need inner corners, even though I really want to put beat in there, but I just don't wanna ruin it. Overall, I really liked how everything blended out. I am a little afraid putting Pageant Queen, blending it out on the crease. I feel like it might be a little bit patchy and harder to blend out. It did take a little bit to buff out on the lower lash line, but all the neutral shades that I used worked out super nice. I am really loving this. It's a fun pop of color on the lower lash line just to change it up a little bit from an all neutral look. So far, I like this palette. I definitely wanna play more with the colorful shades and see. Let's give the Wander Beauty mascara a shot. On this eye, it's gonna be worn alone. And then this eye will be combined with Big Ego. It's lengthening nice. I see it trying to volumize. It may need just another coat. You know, with two coats, it's not the worst. I actually kind of like it. I still think it needs a little bit more oomph though, so we're still gonna try Big Ego first. Yeah, I think the side with Big Ego, there's just a little bit more. Let's swatch the Natasha Denona Blush Duo, Tutu and Golden Coral. Yeah, that's like barely showing up on me. It's just blending right in with my skin. But Golden Coral, there is like that golden shift to it. That is cool. We're gonna try both blushes on both sides. Hopefully Toto can build up. Golden Coral on my right cheek. 
this one's even gonna need to be built up. This is a second layer. She's there, but she's not like as much as I want it to be. <laughs> so layer three. All right, there we go. Third time's a charm. I didn't bronze, oh well. <laughs> Jumped right into this. Definitely took some building up and I'm very nervous how Toto is gonna be built up. This really isn't a blush brush, but for improvising here. This really isn't much of a blush shade now, is it? <laughs> I don't even know if it's doing anything. I keep wanting to say Golden Corral. You know, putting them on top of each other, I see it a little bit more. I am just gonna quickly bronze part of my face with the number seven bronzer. This blush wasn't my favorite. I kind of like going in with Toto first and then Golden Coral, but Golden Coral by itself also looks nice. And then for highlight, I'm gonna take my Ofra Rodeo Dry. Emphasizing all the texture. And I'm gonna set the face with the Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day before we add the lips. Let's take this Juice Beauty Liquid Lip. I like the color, I like the doe foot, I just don't like how it feels on my lips. Never experienced this before with a liquid lip, so let's take this Too Faced gloss and see how we feel about it after this. I don't like this gloss. I like this duo together a lot. It had a very similar doe foot. I would love to know if you guys got Foxy Premium for April 2020 and did we get either of the same variations or did you get completely different variations? What items did you choose for your choice? Let me know if you chose the Kapari or Peach and Lily as well. And I would love to know how all the products that you received worked out for you. And are you guys looking forward to May's Premium? The choices didn't really wow me that much. It was an eye cream and a bronzer, but the base boxes, I'm really excited for the choices in May. Got Elemis and Glam Glow. Spoiler alert. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And if you don't, I appreciate your view anyways, and I'll see you in the next video.